Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here I'll be doing a demonstration on how to replace the front brakes on a Ford Ranger. Don't forget to check out my website at www.4diyers.com or click on the link in the description below. Be sure to also check out my other social media pages such as Google+, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. This particular Ranger I am working with here today is a 1998 two-wheel drive with no ABS. For this vehicle I will be replacing both the pads and rotors along with new wheel bearings. I will leave the wheel bearing replacement for a separate video so be sure to stay tuned for that. First start by elevating the side of the vehicle you will be starting with safely and then remove the wheel. Now crack the cap on the master cylinder to prevent any pressure buildup when we push the pistons back in the caliper. There will be two 13mm bolts which need to be removed in order to take the caliper off. One towards the top of the caliper and the other towards the bottom, both on the back side. Next we will need to push the pistons back, which will save us from doing this afterwards. Doing this also makes the caliper slightly easier to remove, because it can catch up on something sometimes. Here I'll be using larger interlocking pliers, pinching on the mounting bolt locations and the carrier to push the piston back in place. You will need to do this for both top and bottom because this is a two piston caliper. Remove the caliper and place it on top of the upper control arm. Then use either a soft wire or a bungee cord to tie it in place. This will both prevent it from falling back down and putting excessive strain on the rubber flex line. Remove the brake pads. Usually these can be pried or tapped out of place. If you are using a hammer and are keeping the rotors, be extremely careful not to damage the rotor. I don't normally recommend prying against the rotor either as you can damage the braking surface. After the pads have been removed, you should be left with something such as this. If you are not replacing the rotors, then you can install the new pads. Now if you are installing the pads, also be sure that the mounting points for the pads where they slide into place aren't excessively rusted and have a tight fit, otherwise this will cause the pads to stick. In order to remove the rotor, the carrier does need to be removed, which is done by removing the two 15mm bolts on the back side. One is on the bottom of the carrier and the other is on the top, just below the ball joint location. This can be tight and it is hard to get any leverage so I would recommend turning the wheels so you are able to get a breaker bar in this location. Finally moving on to the rotor, this is held onto the spindle. Therefore the rotor and hub are one assembly. Removing the grease cap from the hub, use interlocking pliers to gently grab onto the outside and gently rock the cap back and forth. Now a cotter pin will need to be removed. Bend the cotter pin straight and then remove it from its hole. Take off the metal retainer and then there will be a 24 millimeter nut exposed. After that, the rotor is a sliding fit. Pull back, so the flat washer is to the edge of the threaded shaft, and then push it back on. This will give us access to easily remove the flat washer and outer bearing. Then remove the rotor fully. New rotors do come in a rust inhibiting packaging oil, which must be removed before installation. If this is not removed, this can damage the braking surface. I have been very happy with these rotor and drum cleaning wipes made by Permatex. The reason I use them is that they do not contain any VOCs, are able to clean any contaminants with ease, easily disposable once done, will last much longer than the spray-on brake solvents, and leave a protective coating to prevent rust. For rotor replacement, you can also install new seals and wheel bearings or reuse the old components. However, the seals normally do get damaged during the removal process, so it would be a good idea to purchase a replacement. Be sure to inspect the old components for any damage if you plan on reusing them. The old wheel bearings will need to be cleaned and then repacked with grease. In this situation, new wheel bearings and seals were only $15 per side, so it wasn't worth the time to invest in old parts. And that'll be one less thing that needs to be addressed down the road as preventative maintenance. I have already packed the new wheel bearings with grease, then installed the seal on the back side, cleaned the spindle shaft, installed the new assembly, and installed the outer wheel bearing. Then preload the wheel bearing to factory specifications. For more details on wheel bearing replacement, be sure to check out my wheel bearing video, which will be linked in the description below once released. Before we install the carrier, ensure the new pad does not bind in their location. If they do, this can cause poor braking performance, uneven pad wear, and make the brakes stick on. The pads that were ordered did not come with replacement any rattle clips, therefore I will be reusing the old ones considering they are still in good condition. If yours are damaged, purchase replacements. 
Remove them using a standard screwdriver and using a file, clean up the behinds of the clips, removing any brake dust, debris and rust. Ensure the anti-rattle clips are clean and test fit the new pads. Also clean up the floating pins if required as they can seize up over time. This too will also cause uneven pad wear and poor braking performance. Ensure the rubber covers are not damaged and apply new lubricant. Now we're ready to reassemble everything. Install the pad carrier along with the new brake pads. If you wish, you can also apply a thread logger to the bolts on both the carrier and caliper. Clean up the bolts using a wire brush and a degreaser. Here I'll be using a medium strength blue thread locker made by Permatex. This is a gel twist application similar to what is found on a glue stick. It makes it extremely easy to apply and is also a no drip formula so you don't have to worry about a mess afterwards. Now install the caliper back into its place along with the bolts as well. Give the rotor a final wipe down to remove any chance of contaminants. Finally tighten up the brake reservoir cap and gently pump the brakes to move the piston out to their initial location. If this is not done you can risk throwing a brake air coat. This concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions please don't hesitate to post them below. Also please subscribe to my channel and give my video a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.